In this video, I'm going to be going through stochastic gradient descent. But before we get through stochastic gradient descent, I think it's, it's a bit important to focus on gradient descent on itself. So let's just look at uh, some of the maths fundamentals that I need to go through to get through to gradient descent. So, uh, so we have these observations, uh, some observations y and x. Okay, so I should be saying y, yi and xi. And what we're trying to do is we're going to fit a particular function, a limited, so a limited set of functions, in this case a, a linear function, so that we have uh, wx plus, well, let's put in b as well, okay? So we want to find w and b. Um, so, and the loss function is going to be half yi minus the function of f of x i w uh, the entire thing squared and of course the sum of all of that over i and you'll see as soon as you see why i put this half in front so we need to minimize this right and in order to minimize that one thing we can do is we can follow the gradient so we can we can uh, we need to look at the the, the differentiation with respect to our weights and when we do that, what happens is, so the 2 over here will come up in front, cancel off with the half. So I will end up with yi minus f of xi w. And once we differentiate what's inside with respect to w, I end up getting uh, end up getting this f of xi w dw. Okay, so, oh, and I nearly forgot there's a minus in front, okay, because, because there was a minus over here. So, so that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to update our Ws with a coordinate of this equation. Um, so some sort of a learning parameter called gamma, and then this thing. Okay, so let me, let me show you an example when we have y equals x squared. So with y equals x squared, you know that x equals zero is our when the minimum happens. So pretend for a second that you don't know that, and you're going to test some values. So suppose I start off at two, and I'm going to say that my gamma is 0.1. Okay. So in this case, uh, my uh, I should make, let's make them w y equals w squared. Right. So the initial w is two. If I differentiate this function, so the so remember the the function that I'm trying to minimize equals y equals w squared. So dy dw is two uh, w. So the w according to this equation, this equation up here, is going to be two minus zero point one multiplied by two times w. So w in this case is two. Okay, so 2 minus 0.4, so the next point that I'm going to try is 1.6. Okay, and then from 1.6, I'm going to I'm going to repeat this until I get to the point. Well, either where this uh, differential is going to become zero, or we exhaust the number of iterations. Okay, so so that's the essential idea of trying to do uh, gradient descent, All right? So so let's look at this in terms of an example. So what I've done over here is, is I've created 100 points, 100 random points, and x is going to be a, a five dimen oh, sorry, a, a one-dimensional case. Um, and this is our true equation. So y equals 2.3 plus 5.1x. So we create the observations, and then when we, when we plot it, we end up getting this. Okay, so the true function, the red, we don't observe. We, all, all we have is the x and the observed y values. Okay, so I've, I've written down the equations again here for, uh, one more time if you want to go through it. Um, but this time, so we, we're going to run through w and b. Okay, so the loss function is simply the error squared divided through by n. Um, I don't think I used half over here, but that's that's okay. Uh, that's not really too much of a problem. Differentiate this with risk, the loss with respect to dw. I have the 2, which didn't get cancelled off because, again, because I didn't have the half in this loss function. And then uh, it's the exact same as before. So you can look at, you can look at the, uh, 
the, the equations over here, but the reason that I have uh, 2 times error times df dw is because when I differentiate this thing, y minus f, so y minus my estimated f is my error. Okay, and then I multiply that with my differential. So I have that, um, so that's to get dl dw, and df dw happens, happens to be x. I can do the same thing for d, the loss with respect to b as well. You can't find the differential. So let's let's uh, let's use these helper functions, I suppose. And this is this is where the true gradient descent happens. So so the first thing that you do is you you initialize you initialize it to some random starting point. Okay. So in, in this case, uh, ten times a random value. I have my learning uh, parameter to be point one. And so what we're going to do is we, um, so each time I create, uh, I figure out what the error is going to be, and using that error, I figure out what the loss is. Okay, so the loss in itself isn't important for finding what what the next W parameter is going to be, but it's just so that I can show you that the loss is truly decreasing. I, I'm just saving it over here. Okay, so in this case, uh, so the W new is going to be my old W minus my learning parameter multiplied by the differential. So differential the loss with respect to that parameter. Okay, so w new, d new, I replace them. And then I'm going to keep iterating through this for a set number. So in this case, 100 iterations. Okay, so let's let's run through this and see what happens. Uh, so I'll put dl dw, but when I plot the loss, so when I plot the loss, here we go. Here's what happens. It, it starts dropping down. And then, and then settles down at some point. So you, there, there, there becomes a loss where you can't simply go beyond because remember the the uh, the observations are noisy observations. Okay, so it will never quite go down to zero, the loss. Um, so yeah, so that's that's really what why I saved the loss parameter in the in the first place. I need to make sure that the loss is decreasing. I'll show you when it's not so, uh, in a bit. And also, um, I just want to show you the, the the W and the B parameters. Okay, so when I plot this, I end up getting this shape. So W and B, so if you can see the x-axis is W, y-axis is B, that's the starting point. And then it's, it starts moving around until it settles down over here. Okay, so initially there are big steps that it takes, and then slowly it starts converging into one. Okay, so just, just to show you what the true W was, so over here, if we come back all the way back up here, the, the W was 5.1 and B was 2.3. Let's see what this got up to. So W was well, somewhere along the 5 mark and B is uh, B was 2 point something. Okay, so we, we've done a, a reasonable job. So actually here's, here's the final value for W and B. Okay, so it, it did a decent uh, job of finding it. Okay, so just to just to prove this uh, same point with uh, when I have multiple W's, I've done the same same thing, but this time with uh, five weights. Okay, so when I come here and I'll just show you what W is. So my true W is this array this time. Okay, uh, my X shape is thousand by five, W shape is five by one. All right, and we can do the exact same thing, but this time I've, I've ignored B. Right, so. Um, my function is x dot w. My loss function is exactly the same. So th what what what's happening over here is is another way of saying uh, y y minus my estimated y squared. Okay, so e e dot by itself will give you the square of all the elements. Um, and then dl dw is is again is again. So if if you remember, it's before it was e multiplied by x. Now it's just a matrix version of that e multiplied by x, but you average it. Okay, because I, I divided by the loss function by n over here. Okay, so we do gradient descent again, um, and you'll find out that again the loss decreases. My my gamma this time is one, uh, so 0 0.001. Okay, um, and let's just look at the parameters that I got, and compare that with if I was to fit a linear regression using scikit-learn. Okay, so if I was to put scikit-learn. Um, it's it's fairly close as you can see the, the numbers okay so negative point one eight negative point one nine okay and negative point seven four here got negative point seven four okay so with linear regression you uh, I suppose in some ways you would get the exact value that you should be getting uh, 
if you were to use linear regression. Whereas because we're using gradient descent, this uh, it'll get close to the ideal value of here, but won't be quite exact. Okay, so if and again I compare it to the true values over here as well. Oh, sorry, compared to the linear regression values, and you can see they're all quite close. Um, okay, now the 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 reason why we're here: stochastic gradient descent. So with stochastic gradient descent, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run um, only batches of my data set. Okay, so um, so epoch. Okay, so, so let me explain what the what the terms are. So the batch size, so my x in itself, I think I believe it was I had thousand observations. So if I just go x dot shape, I could have done len x, it doesn't really matter. So it's, it's thousand I had thousand observations. But this time I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my algorithm I'm only gonna randomly choose twenty of them at each time. I'm not gonna choose a thousand the entire thousand to do my gradient descent. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna choose twenty. And I'm gonna do that. Um I'm well, I'm going to do that. Uh, how many times am I going to do that? So, this many epochs. So, epoch is a a run through the entire data set. Okay. So, so what is a what is a run through the da data set? What do I mean by that? So, I said the batch size is twenty, and there's thousand. So, I'm going to run through my data set fifty times, and that's a single epoch. So, what what in uh, machine learning, um, it's okay to sample the entire data set because each data point has an opinion about what my weights are supposed to be right so it's going to when it runs runs through the data set once it's it's almost well it, it won't do as it might not do as good as the entire data set but it's faster i think so that's the main point with stochastic gradient descent so so let's 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 just run through the code so we initialize w as usual okay um, what's really interesting, what's very different, I, sh I should say, is over here, we're going to choose from the thousand, we're going to choose 20 randomly. Okay, so this index over here is going to choose 20 of those things completely randomly. And my error is only going to be calculated using just those those 20. Okay, so, the, my, my, so I have my error over here. And... The rest of the calculations are exactly the same, except for the fact that you only send a subset of it. Okay, so so because we're only sending subsets, this this whole thing is going to be a significantly faster. Um, but but saying that, um, it well this I have two for loops over here. So the, the inner for loop is going to is going to try and run through the entire data set. Now, if you're if you're if you're quite observant, you notice that. There's a good chance that I probably won't run through all my data set because I'm completely randomly choosing them, but that's okay because each each um, I'm going I'm actually, there's the outer for loop which will run through this and you probably would get through uh, most of your data set when you run through this thing, okay? And keep in mind because each y and x has this opinion about what w is supposed to be, this is not a is is not a big issue. Okay, and especially with large data sets, you simply cannot uh, wait to make sure that your entire data set is fed through your algorithm. Okay, but what you're trying to do is you're still trying to minimize your loss, but in batches. So let's let's run this. So when we run through this, initially there's a huge drop, and then it's it's pretty much just just hovers around this thing. Okay, but what I'm telling you is that it's significantly fast. And if you look at the the uh, the weights, they're still they're still done a really good job. Okay, so negative point one eight three. Okay, so which is quite similar to what we had before. Uh, is this a different data set? I can't quite remember. But anyway, so it's still really close to the the, the linear regression coefficients. Okay, but the the main point that I want to get get across is that. The only thing that's changed over here is that we're using a subset, so that we speed up. So that's where the stochastic part of the gradient descent comes from. Okay, and another thing, actually, one thing I completely missed out on telling you is that this learning parameter, I decay that. Okay, so this decay over here is 0 0.9, and I'm and I'm making the learning parameter slower and slower as we go on, and that's that's probably more important when it comes to doing stochastic gradient descent. You don't want to learn too fast in the later stages. Okay, so you want to learn really fast in the early stages, but then keep slowing down as you as you get down to some sort of minima. 
okay and this this jumpiness over here and th this is completely fine okay? there is no problem with with the jumping all over the place it's um, what you should really be concerned about is that you minimize the loss and and that it does a decent job and which stochastic gradient this descent really does and this is what really helped neural networks uh, uh, faster in some sense before GPUs came along so that's um, that's all for now actually one last thing before I go um, so we, let me come back over here you need to choose your learning parameter fairly carefully if I choose it to be too fast let me just show you what happens okay so same data set loss function goes straight up okay so it can be quite sensitive to your learning parameter so if I put it back down it will go down okay so let me finish off over there uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. This this uh, will be in my GitHub repository. And please do subscribe. Thank you.